Welcome to labmins.com. In this video, we will talk about Cisco TrustSec architecture to give you a better understanding of what TrustSec is all about and to prepare you for our TrustSec lab videos. So there will be no lab in this video. Now the whole concept of Cisco TrustSec is to build a secure identity-based access network. And the three main components of Cisco TrustSec are authentication, where endpoints are authenticated, identify, and assign access privileges. Secure communication, where the data are transported securely by link level encryption with 802.1AE or MACSEC and security group based access control SGACL where access policies are enforced before allowing endpoint access to the resources. Okay, so at the middle here we have a Cisco TrustSec domain and it is constructed by contiguous groups of TrustSec hardware capable devices. And these devices authenticate against each other, learns to negotiate each other's capabilities. There's also a concept of security group tag, and the security group tag which gets added to packets header, just like it shows in the diagram here, at the ingress point of the TrustSec domain, and the SGT tag carries information that is used to determine endpoint access privileges. So how does SGT value gets assigned to the endpoint? SGT can be assigned as part of authorization process when the endpoint authenticate using 802.1x onto the network. For example, within the authorization profile returned from Cisco I like we show in the diagram here. But if the endpoint is exempted or incapable of 802.1x, you can also hard code SGT value under the interface configuration or do a static SGT to source IP mapping on the edge switches. Once the SGT is determined and packets are tagged, the tag is maintained across the TrustSec domain until it reaches the egress point where the access policies are enforced. And this could be based on SGT of both SGT and DGT. So SGT being the source security group tag and DGT being destination security group tag. Okay, so that is when you have a TrustSec hardware capable device end to end. What if you have an edge device that is not capable of inserting or transporting SGT? Assuming that the device support SGT exchange protocol, also known as SXP, the device can pair up with the closest SGT capable device and sends the SGT and IP mapping information so the SGT capable device would know what SGT value to impose into the packet before entering the TrustSec domain. Since SXP works over TCP, you can see here is port 64999, the edge device can be actually several layer three hops away from the closest SGT capable device. Another major component that makes all these work is the policy decision point device. And here we use Cisco Ice as an example. Some of the things the Cisco Ice are responsible for are the authenticating authorizing endpoints and returning SGT value at the ingress device, authenticating authorizing network device before allowing them to join the TrustSec domain, as well as maintaining the configuration of egress policy including the SGACL and SGT to name mapping and distributing them to the egress devices for enforcement. Okay, so now that we understand all that, you can see there are a lot of moving parts in implementing Cisco TrustSec. And one of the most important thing is actually to know your device capabilities. So with that said, let me pull up a Cisco document for the TrustSec. Right here, we have a TrustSec 1, 2.0, and 2.1 product bulletins. And again, we'll post uh, this particular URL down below. And let's start off with the Cisco TrustSec 1.0. So back in TrustSec 1.0, you can see these are a list of devices that support some of the TrustSec features. And you can see some of them support, for example, like SXP, and it also shows the minimum of software version requires to run that particular features. Okay, so you can actually see this back in TrustSec 1.0, there's not a whole lot of feature listed. And it seems that the only devices capable of SGACL back then was uh, Nexus uh, 7000 with the version uh, 502. But now let's move on to TrustSec 2. You can see there's a little bit more platforms and features supported. And if you search for uh, SGACL, you can see now 6500 has become supported. And now we are at TrustSec 2.1. And you can see the list actually gets uh, even bigger. So if you, for example, search for uh, SGACL and see what devices now support that. So Catalyst 6000, 7000, you can see now even 5000, Nexus 5000 also support SGACL. Okay, so just make sure that you compare your hardware to this particular capability list and know exactly 
what that particular hardware is capable of before you start building the TrustSec domain. Because if they're not capable of TrustSec, you might find yourself in a situation where you can't get things up and running as expected. Okay, so that wraps up our video on introduction to Cisco TrustSec. Thank you for watching labinance.com. I'll see you guys in the next video.